Today, we're visiting an abandoned pond. There's some koi fish there that we need to save. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my gosh, don't show mom, don't show mom. Didn't know they made them in that color. What color? Don't show mom yet, come on, come on. George, how many fish can fit Hold them? on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, hold who on. else are they for? Are you oh! 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 All right, so I just saw a post on Craigslist. Someone is about to abandon their pond. It's freezing over. They offered to anyone who wants to come get them, so that's what we're doing today. We're about to go rescue, I believe it's five koi, but I don't really know what to expect. All I know is that this person offered them up for free to anyone who wants them before this pond gets abandoned. I figure why not go get them? No koi left behind. I probably won't want to keep them, but at least I can keep them here until I find them some new homes. So koi fish during the winter can actually live underneath the ice, but that's only if your pond is three feet or deeper. So that's why I usually bring my koi fish inside for the winter. We did have a bunch of fun though this year breaking the ice, but it can be very scary when you're moving your fish post hibernation because their metabolism slows down so much when the water gets really cold that it is dangerous to move koi fish once the water starts dropping below a certain temperature. So this is gonna be a little bit of a dangerous transfer and we're gonna wanna take things very slowly and make sure that the fish acclimate and adjust properly. All right, so first thing, let's get some supplies so that we're prepared, especially because we need to go drive like an hour into the middle of nowhere to pick them up. All right, so we got some boxes with some insulation foam to keep their temperature constant. Big, clear plastic bags. Battery powdered air pump. It's good to keep one of these on hand. Perfect for situations like this. Japanese koi net, this should make it a whole lot easier. We got everything we need here. Let's go rescue some koi. I was on Craigslist and I stumbled upon a listing that somebody made today, right between Milwaukee and Chicago. Five koi fish around 10 inches to 16 inches. Getting rid of pond in spring can have access as soon as safe to transport. So just by coincidence today, it's like 40 degrees outside, which is actually pretty warm for February in Chicago. It sounds like this guy's about to like ditch his pond and like just completely abandoned it and like doesn't want to have to deal with these fish. From a few of these photos, it looks like the pond is in like pretty rough shape, which I imagine is why he's probably gonna just get rid of it. You can't really see the koi fish all that well in the photos, but you can tell that at least a couple of them are pretty colorful. So I don't know, it should be interesting. We're just like in the middle of farmland. Okay. I think it's here. I don't know. All right, this is it. We are here. Oh, it's huge. Wow. There's seven, by the way. Seven? There's seven in there. So why are you getting rid of the pond? Just because... I'm just done. You're just done with it. Like I said, I've had it for 15 years. Just tired. Yeah. You know, it's work. Oh, it's a lot of work. You know, and Ponds are a lot more work than they seem like. So you got koi in it now? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay, you know all about it. They must be pretty cold. That's how you know koi fish are cold, when they just don't move. All right. Sorry. I'll get to look at this. These are beautiful. All right, so let's start with the biggest one. This big red mama right here. Wow, do you see the scales on that guy? Wow. Jeez. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is a heavy fish. Wow. Is that okay? Yeah. Get him? All right, so we got the two big koi in here. Guys, look. Look at this. Unreal. That is such a deep red. All right, we're gonna put the smaller ones in the smaller box. Calm down, boys, calm down. These are gonna be some heavy boxes. Let's get them in the car. All right. Box number two. Oh, this is insane. All right, so we got our aerator here. Turn that on so that they can get some oxygen. We just hit the absolute jackpot. A few of these fish are actually insanely beautiful. So on the drive back, we're gonna start the car off cold. It got cold again. And we're just very, very slowly gonna start raising the temperature in the vehicle uh, one degree at a time so that we can actually acclimate the fish to a little bit of a warmer temperature while we're driving home. The last thing we wanna do is shock these fish that was crazy. I was not expecting those kinds of koi. Three, I believe three of which are like really, really, really quite nice. So basically he had had this koi pond for 15 years. It had just run its course. He was ready to move on and he didn't want to have, keep it anymore. On my way out, he was telling me how his wife is going to be stoked that he finally has gotten rid of the fish. That pond though is definitely running on fumes. I mean, if he had wanted to continue keeping these fish, he definitely would have had to entirely rebuild the pond. So I understand why he wanted to part with it. 
it's cool we just got some really nice koi so now we got an hour long drive back guys originally i just came here in the hopes of saving these fish i was not expecting to find such beautiful koi fish so i don't know what he's going to do with them but i wanted to give these fish a chance so like enough time to find them good homes so i'll hold on to them for a little while but we'll see if i keep a few of them Hello. yo brian yes this is george george who coral george Hey buddy, how are you? What's up, man? Um, if I wanted to like quarantine it or like treat it so that I'm not just throwing like a rando fish into my pond with all my nice koi, what yeah. would be the best way to do that? The challenge is, is like when you quarantine a fish, nobody has a setup to quarantine them the right way. I have that big blue like thing that I could like quarantine them in. Yeah, use that thing. I just called Brian over at Aquascape Inc. Tonight, we're gonna temperature acclimate these fish and just hold on to them in our big 500 gallon temporary pond. And then tomorrow, we're actually gonna take them over to Brian at Team Aquascape, where they're gonna start the process of a full on quarantine. All right. You guys won't believe what we just, Joel, what just happened. Are you kidding me? Nelly, Nelly, look. Yanni, I need your help. You're gonna wanna see this, come on, trust me. I don't work for Coral Fish 12G anymore. I gave that life up to be a businessman. Dude, come on. Yeah, you... I, no, I need your help. What are you, his lawyer? <laughs> yes. I need, no, 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 I need your help though, for real. I'm not lifting boxes. I'm not doing that. Dude, come on. He's gonna get his vest dirty. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> I mean, what's going on, guys? Uh, you're you're literally matching here from the from the shoes all the way to the the vest to the polo shirt. So we share the same uh, software up here, right? We read the same books. Yanni graduated college. Now he's in the working world, the real world. So tell the viewers, Yanni, what do you what have you been up to post college? Post college, I gave up the beers, started getting into business. So I just bought a bowling alley. Taking on business, looking like a businessman. I love it. It's nice. It's a good look. You look professional. No hurry, because we got we got these fish. <laughs> it's more than that. Don't show mom. Don't show mom. I didn't even know they made them in that color. <gasps> what color? Don't don't show mom yet. Come on, come on. George, how many fish can fit down there? Don't you think we have enough? They're not all for me. Well, well who else are fun. they for? We're saving them. Save. Grab this box. Dude, that's really heavy. Here, hold these. They're making noise in there. You gotta go in the basement, guys. They smell like shit. <laughs> oh, I mean, was that necessary? They are rescued koi. These are like refugee oh, koi, Yanni. You're rescued? Make, you're making fun of not abandoned. Refugees. Don't call them refugees, so that's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the uh, kitty pool. With the heart on his head. Is that the coolest thing you've seen? Isn't it beautiful? For Valentine's Day. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna fill this up with some cold water and for the water from the bags to just very slowly heat up to room temperature. You don't wanna do it too quickly or it'll shock the fish. All right, so for tonight, we are just going to put the fish into our 500 gallon temporary pond over there in the corner before we take them to Aquascape tomorrow to start the quarantine. But while they're temperature acclimating, put them in this big blue pool. We'll be able to see them really nicely and you guys will at least be able to see the fish. Put our hand in the water, it's still freezing. All right, so let's just... <gasps> wow. All right, let's... Uh... That is beautiful. Wow, that's a big guy too. Wow. These are rescues? Yeah. How will you know that they're healthy? Well, that's what we're about to do. I want to get a really good look at the koi first in this blue kiddie pool so we can kind of inspect them and see like what kind of shape they're in. Parasites, diseases, and that's not something I really want to introduce to my koi fish. Acclamation. Johnny rolling up the sleeve. This is real business. Which one's your favorite? Dude, that one is unbelievable. That big one, right? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna name that one Big Red. Big Red? Yeah, or we could name him Clifford, Red Dragon. Meatball. Meatball. <laughs> meatball. <laughs> like Meatball or Big Red. He's beautiful. I wanna keep him. Oh, he's pretty too. 
He's very pretty. This is, this guy is just, it's such a, he has such a deep red. They're all pretty. They're all very pretty. Now we got the little smaller ones. Slide them out. Okay. Now this one is a butterfly. This one's actually Oh, a butterfly? We don't have a butterfly. We don't. This one, he's, he's great. Oh my God, this water is freezing. Oh, look at his. Oh, there's some. Look at his eyelids. Look. That's normal? It doesn't look right. Oh, what if someone told you that you don't look right? <laughs> Sorry. Damn, I love his fin. All right, so we got all the koi fish in the little mini pond here. We're now gonna just quickly and very carefully inspect all of them to see and get an idea of what their health condition is like. Let's we'll start with the big guy. I believe these are called Matsuba, which refers to a single colored koi that has a black reticulation pattern on its scales. And the word kin refers to a metallic koi. So this is a kin Matsuba. This is like what a no normal orange or red looks like in a koi fish, but this is like a deep metallic red. It almost looks like a dragonfish or like an arowana. All right. Well, you can see he's got a little bit of white here on these scales. Ooh, and then oh, this white stuff over on the side of his body. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. That's exactly why we're gonna wanna quarantine these fish because we just don't know how fish like this are gonna react in my pond, what diseases or parasites are on them that they could expose to my fish. So let's look at some of the other guys. This is a pretty fish. He's very standard. I really like this fish. The red head and a black body. The white guy, it's hard to tell because he's white, but he looks pretty good. He also has kind of a deeper metallic red. On the butterfly koi though, you can also see these white spots here on his scales. And I don't know if those are just scales that have come off or that might be something. Honestly, guys, you really just never know. This like red, orange, and black theme going on. They look amazing as a group. Give a like for the koi fish. They went through a lot today. I gotta start the process now, moving these guys over into the quarantine tank, I'm slowly giving them some salt. Later on, I'm gonna have to medicate them before eventually find them some new homes. And we'll probably end up putting maybe one, maybe two or three into my own indoor pond here. So make sure to subscribe to see the updates with these new koi fish. George, out.